Hello everybody. In this video we're going to be looking at the Gauss representation of the gamma function, which is basically representing the gamma function as an infinite product. So consider the integral that we'll just denote by the capital letter S. The integral from 0 to n of t to the s minus 1 times 1 minus t to the n or t over n to the nth power dt. So this integral looks an awful lot like the gamma function and in fact if we were to take the limit as n goes to infinity we would get gamma of s because this limit right here is just e to the negative t and then our bound would go to infinity as well. But that is something we'll note at the end of this proof. In fact, we want to keep our integral like this and actually manipulate it so that we get that infinite product. So f we're going to integrate this by parts. Um, so we're going to say that u is equal to this portion right here, 1 minus g t over n to the n, so, and uh, dv is just equal to t to the s minus 1. Then our du and v are n times negative 1 over n times 1 minus t over n to the n minus 1 power and v equals t to the s over s. And uh, the reason why I'm not simplifying this is, well, we'll see. So just keep n over n for now. So using integration by parts, we get that this integral is equal to, um, so I'm not going to read this, but you can pause and look at it. So we have u times v evaluated. Remember, when we do integration by parts on a definite integral, we have to do uh, the evaluation. And then minus a negative n over n s, and then this stuff. So let's actually look at this evaluation. At t equals 0, we're multiplying by t outside, so that becomes a 0. And at t equals n, this inside part becomes 1 minus n over n, which is 1 minus 1, which is 0. So this total thing evaluates to 0. And then we're left with this thingy, but in fact the negatives cancel out. And so we sort of get a recursion. We get n over ns times the integral from 0 to n, and then this stuff. And notice that uh, sort of an invariant in this problem is that the sum of the two exponents equals n minus, or er, s plus n minus 1 here. So s minus 1 plus n and s plus n minus 1. Those are going to be there's a the the power of t will keep increasing by one if we do our integration by parts trick again, and the um, the power of this term n minus one will keep going down, and so we can deduce that after um, enough trials we will get the following expression. So essentially, after using integration by parts on this original expression, after we do it n times, um, this expre uh, this term here that we were multiplying by, this um, since it's a power of n, if we do integration by parts n times, we get rid of it completely. And so now this um, this integral portion is easy enough to evaluate um, because we'll just get t to the s plus n over s plus n from 0 to n. And obviously at 0 you're going to get a 0. So we just have n to the, to the s plus n divided by s plus n times this whole mess. And so what we see here is that we have um, in, in the denominators of each fraction we have n's. And how many of these n's do we have? We actually have n, uh, we have s n's because we have s fractions here. 
or n fraction, sorry. Um, something like that. Yeah, 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 n fraction, sorry. So in the denominator, if we were to factor out all of those n's, we would get an n to the n. And that cancels out with the plus n and the, uh, the power of this n. So we get n to the s. And then we have n, n minus 1, all the way to 1. And then we have these, uh, this s, this s plus 1, this s plus n minus 1, and this s plus n. Notice that we can match each denominator, say s plus n. This denominator matches with n. Let's say that, because we're adding n to s. So we have n over n plus s. And then we have this n minus 1. This matches with this denominator. So we have n minus 1 over um, s plus n minus 1. And this will continue on and on until you get to 1 over s plus 1. Now this whole thing, um, we still have we still have n to the s, and we still have s because notice we have a lone s here that doesn't get matched to anything. So we have n over at or n to the s over s, and then this product here. And that product can easily be written in a in sort of a pattern form. We have uh, the product of k goes from 1 to n of k over s plus k. Because we have 1 over s plus 1, n minus 1 over s plus n minus 1, and n over s plus n. And then with this is multiplied by n to the s over s. So far, so good. Uh, this is what our capital S was originally equal to. And we noted that at the limit, as n goes to infinity, of capital S is gamma of S. And so from that, we can claim that the gamma of S is equal to the limit of this product. And so this is what we call the Gauss representation of the gamma function. I'm not going to try and pronounce this word, but we're going to prove another representation of the gamma function using the Gauss representation. And so all we have to do is a few lines of manipulations. So first, um, just remember that I'm keeping the, the, the limit here. I'm just not going to write it. So we have 1 over s. And then n to the s, I'm going to turn into e to the s ln of n. And then in the same exponent, I'm going to subtract s times the nth harmonic number plus s times the nth harmonic number. So I'm essentially adding 0. Um, you know, that's just a fancy technique. And um, here we have the product from k goes from 1 to n. And then I'm going to flip the fraction by taking the reciprocal, so the negative 1 power. And we'll get 1 plus s over k. So far, so good. Now, if we factor out s here, uh, as n goes to infinity, the natural log of n minus the nth harmonic number is negative gamma, uh, small gamma, the euler mascheroni constant. And I did a video on this. So we have 1 over s times e to the negative gamma s plus, um, and then the nth harmonic number I'm actually going to turn into a sum. Uh, like so. So I'm just using the, de the definition of the harmonic number. And then still, uh, and then outside of the exponent, we have 
still the same product. And now obviously um, since we have an addition here we can just um, factor out the e to the gamma negative gamma s over s and then if we have a sum an infinite or not well not really an infinite sum but an in term sum inside of the exponent then we can just turn each individual thing into um, into a product of e to that term and since this sum and this product have the same indices we can conjoin them so we have from k equals 1 to n of e to the s over k times 1 plus s over k to the negative 1 power and so now we have the limit as n goes to infinity and so in in all we get the this person's representation of the gamma function which is e to the negative gamma s over s times the infinite product of e to the s over k times 1 plus s over k to the negative first power. And so in the next video I will be showing another function and um, which is the di gamma function and uh, probably use this representation to get some more properties. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.